Frank, we're coming up to the anniversary of a very special occasion for you, the Champions League 2011-12. What are your memories of that fantastic year? Well, the, the, the best night of my footballing life, without a doubt, Jamie, Munich. It was, it was an incredible night. And, and I think for, for many a year, we've been trying to win the Champions League. Lost final, lost semi-finals. And um, it felt like the last chance for, for the group, really. We were all getting a bit older. And the year was tough. The year was tough. When you look back now, you, you struggle to believe the story. You know, didn't do so great in the league. Had some big issues. Um, was struggling against Napoli, looking like we we're on the verge of going out. And Barcelona looking like the verge of going out. So there were so many subplots to what became the most beautiful year in Chelsea's history. I want to take you back to Napoli, Frank, because I was working on the TV that game. And it doesn't normally happen. We're in the same hotel as you. And I don't think in all my time in football, I've ever seen anything quite like it. You could see that there was almost anarchy to a certain extent. Players falling out with the manager. There was talk about players getting, big players getting left out, as you know, in the team. Villas Boas and maybe lost the dressing room. You lose that game 3-1. Well. What are your memories about that day in Naples? It was tough, Jamie. It was tough. And, and actually, now doing the job that I do, I understand it would have been tough for the manager as well because it was a difficult situation. And uh, we had the, the, the hotel outside was full. The fans were there all night, you know, putting pressure and putting pressure. You, you felt that it was going to be a hostile night on the pitch anyway. And yeah, there were some some bigger players. I'd been, you know, a regular for quite a long time at Chelsea. I was out of the team. Ashley Cole didn't play on the night. Um, and looking back, yeah, I was disappointed on the night. And I remember when the team, and I think we'd had quite a lot of consistency in, in terms of the core of the team. And when that starts to change, I think it brings a little bit of like a nervousness or a, or a feeling with it. And um, yeah, going into the game, you can see why the game went the wrong way for us because it was such a tough atmosphere to go in and we weren't solid. We weren't really properly right. And of course... Uh, that showed up in the next few weeks. And then Cavani, Lovetsi, was a fantastic side. Yeah. The manager obviously left and they brought in Roberto Di Matteo, stroke John Terry, it felt like at the time. I remember being John Wynn on the sidelines towards the end of the game and giving yeah. instructions. It was incredible to see. And I went to the second leg, obviously, and that was a massive night to turn that around, Frank. And then it felt like you started to believe as a team. Yeah, it was one of the, the great nights a Chelsea fan would tell you at Stamford Bridge because... It was, you know, to go into the game 3-1 down, as you say, the talent we knew they had, the circumstances of Robbie coming in. And Robbie was great in the interim period. He spoke to all the players individually, um, sort of garnered a spirit between us and, and a feeling that we could do it. And, and, and we did with a lot of desire. That, now, I think the team and the squad over those years, we showed a lot of spirit at different times. Yeah. We did tend to yeah. find a way when needed. And that came down to big personalities and people like that night. I think, I think I'm right in saying Didier scored the first. I think JT mm -hmm. scored a header. You know, typically Ivanovic, another monster of a, of a, a player and as a person. And, and big names step up. And, and we stepped up that night with the help, with the help of a, an amazing crowd. The quarterfinals took care of themselves. You're pretty comfortable against Benfica. But that night in Barcelona, Frank, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it on, on the football pitch. You lose Gary Cahill through injury. John Terry, the captain, gets sent off. You end up with a back four with Ramirez, Baswinger, Ivanovic, and the only one that really is a, is a player in his right position is obviously Ashley Cole. You must have thought at that time, we've got no chance here. You're playing against the best team in the world. Jamie, when, when we went 2 0 down, and you know, we were 10 men, and that reshuffle, as you say, happened, I, I actually thought this could be the worst night of my football in life. I, I imagined probably not <laughs> coming around. Well, what are you thinking? What score at that time? I, I'm thinking, honestly, towards double figures. I wouldn't have been surprised. Oh, two nil down. I spent the first 20 minutes getting nowhere near Chevy and Iniesta and all that. Lot. <laughs> and then we've got another whatever to go. And I'm thinking, oh, seriously, and, and I'm not, that, that sounds funny. It's not a joke, Jamie. You, you've played at that high level where you know there are players that are so comfortable and can hurt you and run behind you. And, and with the, the reshuffle, and I, I just didn't see it, Jamie. I didn't, if, we, if we don't score the goal just before half time, which changed our feeling, then the that game. That was Ramirez, was it? Did you play him in? Yeah, yeah. I think it was the only time I got into the Barcelona half in the first <laughs> half. And, uh, was it like a celebration? Yeah, yeah. Honor when you got in their half? Yeah, I did. I did. And thankfully, I had a runner to try and find. And uh, Ramirez running the space. And I, I, just, I just looked up and caught him and just put it in. It was a nice pass, but it was an even better finish. The finish was amazing. It was a great finish. And then second half, obviously, Frank, you come out. What was the team talk then? Did the, did, that must have obviously changed the whole complexion of your feeling and maybe a little bit of belief. The crowd, I can remember that night, started to get a little bit of a bit of anxiety as well. Did, did you did you feed off of that? Yeah, a little bit. I don't think at half time. Maybe at half time we did have a bit of a let's go. We've got a chance. You know, we knew we were you know at that point in the driving seat, but not. We're massively handicapped. We're a man down against the best team you know in the world. And 
it, it, it was it was not so much the words at half time, it was more the feeling of the second. I, I remember where I joked that I didn't get in there half, I hardly got past my own 18 yard box in the second half. We were like the four and then the three or the four and then like one, and that was it. And, and couldn't even get up to people because when you went up towards Iniesta, it just go by you. So I'd like, <laughs> yeah, have to let him come and just hope that we can get bodies in the way and can't keep shuffling. It was just shuffle and get across and get across. And the whole half was like, I think we had a couple of little moments where we got a breather, but no, it was, um, it was a real digging scenario. And then when, when Fernando Torres scores and Gary Neville, brilliant commentary, says it's written in the stars. Did you start to feel like that, Frank? Oh, yeah, I did. I did. I mean, it's easy said now, I suppose, because we had Bayern Munich at their own ground to come, uh, as we found out afterwards. But at the same at the same time, I think when those things, those those fates sort of seem to come together um, and a game you have no right to win, you win. And the things that happened before, then you do. You do. You know, with Fernando Torres as well, had a difficult time at times before, gets that special moment himself. So, yeah, there was there was a great feeling after that game, big sort of celebrations as a semi-final. But at the same time, we had a feeling that this could be the one. Absolutely. Then you, so you're playing against a brilliant side, Bayern Munich, in their home ground. What were your feelings before the game? You had a lot of injuries, suspensions. They, they had a couple of suspensions as well. But did you maybe feel this might be a game too far with a team that was so strong, probably in their prime as well? Yeah, possibly. We, we were very aware of being big underdogs and we knew we were missing huge players. You know, namely John is the captain, but big, big players. Um, I remember what Robbie Di Matteo did on the morning of the game. It's been documented a little bit, but we had a meeting and called us in for it would be a pre-game meeting. And he actually had videos of all our family members sending little notes and well dones and good lucks, whether it was our children or our, our grands, our wives or whatever, our mothers. So it was one of those things where we all sat there and it was like tear after tear or emotional moment after emotional moment in the room. And it was, I thought it was an amazing piece of man management from Robbie at the time, team management. Um, not the reason we won the game, of course, but we went in with a feeling. It's strange, it's hard to put it now. We knew that they were stronger than us. We knew we were the underdogs. But this team, we, we had something about us that kept fighting and kept going. And obviously, we had the king, the king, the man who produced Didier, did it time and time through his career, come up with a header that I don't think another player in world football pretty much could have done. Um, and then got the right winning penalty himself. Yeah, with 83rd minute, Frank, they score, Muller scores. You're thinking then you've been hanging on maybe a little bit of fatigue. And then when he does score the moment, so I think Didier is, you say he's the king. I mean, in terms of finals, he seemed to just rise to the occasion. And he certainly did that night for you. Yeah, Tim, I remember, particularly that run up to the final, that, that Didier became a different person with those big games. In the warm up, in the warm up, it was like he was, he was caged, he was ready to go, and you could see it. And you knew he had the ability to do it. And, and he was confident in that. And that confidence rubbed off on people around him. And, and yeah, he, he was completely the man. He did it time and time again. Finals against Arsenal, Liverpool, top teams, big games. And that's why he's a, a Premier League great. You know, the, uh, yeah. the numbers sometimes, strikers rack up numbers. That makes them great. Bidier got some big numbers, don't get me wrong. But he scored goals at the right absolute moments that won you big games. And you get to extra time, Frank. I'm sure there's a lot of fatigue, a little bit of nerves after what happened in Moscow. They then miss a penalty, I am Robin. Were you thinking... Even more so, this is going to happen. Let's get to penalties. Did you? Could you? What were your memories of extra time? Were you? Obviously, you got an incredible wedge in when you played. Were you? Was there a bit of fatigue? You had to play a lot of that game without the ball. They were a very good side. Oh yeah, no, Jamie, I had fatigue. Don't worry about that. I certainly had fatigue. Again, we'd taken a, a pretty much a chasing. Uh, Peter Cech was in incredible form. I think the the one mentioned the Torres moment and fate. I think the Iron Robin penalty did feel like that. When when Peter Cech managed to save that, he's made Robin as well when he knew him and. And when he saved that, I thought, well, you know what? This could, this seriously could be it. And even though us, all us English men will have a fear of penalties, for a moment, I actually thought this could be it for us. You know, what's the story here? We've got through 120 minutes against a great team in their own backyard and all their crowd. And now we're standing with an opportunity to take penalties to win this team. So, yeah. And you tuck yours away, Frank. They obviously didn't have an opportunity to win it. What was yeah. it? I know, what a bad one. Were, yeah. you, were you nervous stepping up? I was really nervous and... and uh, and Neuer looks huge in the goal. He put his arm yeah. on one of those and he's touched each post. You know? oh, no. That's Michael I mean. was like that. It's horrible oh, when horrible. he's standing there. Well, where are we going to put this? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I thought, I don't want to, side to side, he's probably going to get there if he chooses right. So I'm going straight for his, his face and hope that he moves out of the way. So it was, no, I, I was, of course, you're nervous. A moment like that, you can't, it's hard to explain that it's one of the... Yeah, what is it, Frank? Can I ask you that question? Because you've obviously taken penalties in World Cups, everything, and... and uh, and I think you have to have a certain amount of confidence to take it. But when you get to the, to a final like that, how did you feel? Is it like an out-of-body experience? Or do you, what, how do you sort of deal with that pressure from walking 
from obviously the halfway line to the penalty spot? Do you try to slow your breathing down? Is there anything you do? Or would you just got to get in that moment and just think, I've got to score? Just got to do whatever it takes to score? Yeah, I think out of body moment is the best part way that you described that there because it's really it's really hard to describe. But I, I never I never really felt the crowd at that point personally. I never really felt. I just felt the the, the pressure of the situation. It does become a little bit about you at that point because as much as you want to win that game, you don't want to be the man that, that misses. Um, I think weirdly with that one because uh, Juan Mata missed the first penalty for us early kind of took the pressure off us a little bit. I know, I know it was kind of hanging in the balance then because what if you feel if one more of you misses, it kind of changed the feeling of it. And then sure. obviously when they miss, all of a sudden you go, well, this could be the moment. But it, individually, it's a really hard one to describe. Them. I've done it. I've had success. I've had failures. It's, I, it's something in retirement I certainly don't miss. I'll put it that way. Oh, I can imagine. And then obviously you talk, the king steps up and gets that winning penalty. And then it feels like chaos ensues after that, Frank. Yeah, it did. It did. It, it was chaos because it was a build-up, Jamie, as well. You know, so many years trying and, and to go and, and the Chelsea fans down the end and, the, and the, the, the spirit that we had within the group, the fact that we'd almost been written off, you know, it all came together. It was the, it was the biggest party ever. Days, days, days of, days of partying. <laughs> but what about, I want to talk to you, Kelsey. I think you took a lot of, I know, I know you've had a few jokes with him recently about this as well. Oh, he was brilliant. It, he, he was fantastic, Frank. He put the kit on for us and we didn't even ask him. Next thing he's come out full kit. And I think that's the best way to handle it. You've got to laugh. Listen, laugh about it. I look like an idiot getting the FA Cup final uh, trophy once and the tie lot looks like I'm a schoolboy. I, I would rather have had the kit on if I had my time again. And yeah, I right. think you two look great together. And it's like one of those things. I didn't even think about it in the time frame. It, it didn't bother me at all. No, I, I agree. And, and if there's one man at this football club at that time who deserves to that moment of going with all fault for, because John was the one fighting all along the way. And, and when we had the home leg against Barcelona, sticking his body on the line, when we, we managed to win 1-0 and probably should have lost 3 or 4-1, him and Gary Cahill were immense. John's the one trying to do it for years and years before, came through the academy and loved the club. So absolutely no, it's the modern day of social media. People want to jump on anything. Man, yeah. who's, who's been trying to win that Champions League and captain and, and, and you know, main man of the club as such in, in his role, he can, he can wear what he wants and go up and pick that cup up and whatever he wants and fully deserve. And, and especially after the heartache of what happened in Moscow for him, you know, he was yeah, yeah. He more, more, more than deserved that finish. So for you two to be there, you know, the, the, the heart and soul of that football club, getting that trophy in your hands, Frank, how did it finally feel? Oh, it, was, it was incredible. The, the walk up the stairs, I saw the owner there, the man, you know, man who, who's changed the face of this club, but none of this is here where I'm sitting now without him. Um, and to, to see his face, to, to tr I tried to lift the cup, but everyone was jumping all across me. I, if I could go back again, I would make, get everyone out of the way. JT, come in, me and you do it. I know, I mean, but Platini was trying to get involved, probably, when he loved it. <laughs> he was like, he was going to lift it up himself at one stage, yeah. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was one of those, uh, if I could go back, I'd change the lift slightly and get a bit more centre screen. I think it would be shoved out of the way. <laughs> the, the, be the better thing was that when we went into the dressing room and everyone was in the dressing room, you know, and then, then you start dealing with people that have gone along the way, Massas, Kitmen, the owner comes in, people around him, you know, the beers are out already on the side. Didier's got the cup, doing a bit of a speech and messing around. Really, really special moments. The celebrations were, were incredible. On the pitch, for about an hour with a, with a fan yeah. and in the dressing room, when you you know the hard work that goes into those moments. That hard work started years ago on a training pitch somewhere, you know? Yeah, fantastic. Great memories, Frank. What about when you got back to London and you could celebrate down the King's Road? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know how many, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of people um, again, when you realise that you've won something that you've been striving for and then you see the support of the fans coming, hanging out the windows, singing on top of the bus. The, the most special moments, Jamie, the most special moments when you do things like that, it makes every little bit of graft that you do in the middle worth it. And these are, that Chelsea are the fans, every football club. You know, when big clubs are that win, you see everyone come and that's what you do it for. I mean, you've, you've won it all at that football club, Frank, but that, is that the moment you look back on with most, yeah. most pride? Yeah, without a doubt, Jamie. I, I love the league wins and, and particularly probably the first one when you get your first one, that special feeling. But I think the Champions League becomes such a thing for us. To be the best team in, in the world, I think you win the Champions League, you're the best team in the world. Uh, and to feel like that for a minute or whatever, however long that period lasts, is, is great for, the, for yourself, for the team, for the club as a whole, for the fans to be able to say that. So without a doubt, that's the one. Brilliant, mate. Well, listen, it's so nice talking to you about all your memories. No doubt... On the, on the anniversary, you'll probably have a nice glass of red to celebrate. Maybe even get all the boys together for a Zoom call. That might be a good idea. Maybe, yeah, that's a good chat. That's a good chat. I'll get JT on that one. JT, full kit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, great to talk to you, mate. Stay Thank well you. and fingers crossed we'll be seeing you soon. Same to you. Cheers, Jamie.
Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate.